woke up this morning and I thought, you know, maybe maybe things would be a little bit normal when it comes to college basketball. And it's not the case. Not the case at all. And we got a couple of bombshells coming in from this week carrying over into, well, what's about to be the third week of college basketball. We got a couple of little nuggets here to get through. Um, there was a conference move. I don't think anybody expected this. I don't think anybody, nobody expected this, in fact. Nobody expected this at all. This came out of left field. Yes, we're talking about Loyola Chicago. That's right. A team that's made, you know, they've been a big, big surprise in some of these tournaments recently, you know, getting very, very far. You know, Final Four team at one point. Very, 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 very good team that this Loyola Chicago team has been over the past couple years. They're moving. Where are they moving to from the Missouri Valley? They're moving to the Atlantic 10. I think that's very important. You know, cements the A-10 as a 15-team league. It doesn't seem like there's going to be anything going on. From what it looks like, so the Big East is not looking at some expansion. They're not looking at that. Again, I think the Big East is comfortable where they are anyway with the 20-game schedule. Yeah, and they're comfortable with that. Um, but the A-10, you know, now they're at 15. You know, now things get a little bit, you know, they get a little bit tricky. You know, how do you how do you get a 15-team league scheduled? Out? How do you get all that scheduled? Who knows? Um, but for the Missouri Valley, they're back down to 10. You know, after you know, they're they're going to be back down to 10 very very soon. You know, Belmont's coming in. We know that. Loyola coming out in 2022 to 2023. So that that that'll be next year. So who are they looking at? Who are they looking at? Well, one of them was pretty obvious. That's Murray State. Murray State leaves that actually has also an effect on football as well. You know, if, if they lead the OBC. The other two teams that it seems like they're considering, it doesn't seem to matter. It, it, does, it just doesn't seem to matter. One of them has been rumored for months, and that was UTA. Um, I, I, know, I know about UTA pretty well. I actually went there for a week back in like 2010 so that was like a decade or so ago a little over a decade ago when I went there it was like a STEM program or whatever but that was over a decade ago that's neither here nor there but UTA is being considered I don't really don't think so I don't know where UTA can end up if the Sun Belt's kicking them out soon and by soon I mean 2023 um, I don't know where they'll go UMKC um, people have had concerns people have it seems like people have had concerns about their facilities. And that's what the holdup is there. Plus, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if they, I don't know if they really need to be hopping around. This is like their, that would be their third conference in what, less than, what, less than six or seven years, probably less than a decade, that they move conferences again and again and again, because they went from the summit to the WAC back to the summit. So I, I don't get it. But this is going to be interesting to see how this goes. A 15-team Atlantic 10, I, I find that very interesting because, I mean, the ACC is at 15, and, I mean, things things don't always seem to go well for the ACC, especially the last couple years. Things have not been going particularly well, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. You know, it is what it is. Um, there was another big nugget that dropped, but it ultimately ended up not being too much of an impact, and that was Paolo Banchero getting arrested for DUI. Um, well, not he wasn't actually the one driving, I believe. I believe it was somebody else driving, another Duke player driving, and I, I don't. I, I, it, again, it ended up not mattering because I believe he played later. Because I think that news broke on Monday. I think it was that Monday that it broke. I don't remember, but if anything, if anything tells me anything, there's probably not going to be too much consequence coming from this. I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with all these, with all these um, drunk driving things with college basketball this year. That's like the third or fourth drunk driving, you know, arrest or something close to an arrest that we've gotten this year already and I just don't I, I just don't understand it like again drink responsibly my goodness drink responsibly 
And COVID has said, yeah, we're gonna cancel games. I forget which team it was. I think it was Wagner that can't that had their games either postponed or canceled or something like that. And it's just like I, I thought. I thought we were. I thought guys were getting vaccinated and stuff like that. I thought things were going a little bit better than what they were, but I guess not. Um, like COVID's affect, COVID's affecting football. We know we've known that late into the season, but it's early into the season in college basketball, very very early. So something's not adding up here. Something is not adding up. Uh, I for, again, I forget which, however many games got canceled or postponed or whatever. And I forget which team, but I swear it was Wagner. I swear I, I forgot to write that down. Um. Here's a big one here, a big question here. A big question coming into the week, is the Big Ten overrated? We knew, we knew that there was something wrong with Ohio State when they were struggling earlier in the season uh, against, what, Akron? And then they got beat by Big East team. They got beat by Xavier. Or was it? I can't remember exactly. But, you know, Ohio State got beat. Illinois got beat by Marquette, one of the biggest upsets of the week. I, I watched that game in full. That was a great one. You know, again, that was just a weird game in all honesty because I mean, it felt like it, it felt like you know, you know, Illinois had the game. They they were slumping through it, but they were able to you know get back into it. And yet, Shaka's boys did did Shaka's team just really wanted it more. They really wanted it more. We'll talk about shock in a moment. I, I really think um, I'm really thinking that this Marquette team has come alive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just sitting here just completely flabbergasted, you know, by the way the Big Ten looked this week. I mean, Maryland lost. Yeah, it was Xavier that Ohio State lost to. Like Maryland lost to Michigan lost twice. In fact, they just got blown out by Arizona. Arizona, Arizona, Arizona. You know. You know, the, 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 we're talking about those Arizona Wildcats who haven't really been. I, I don't think I don't think we talked about Arizona the Arizona Wildcats as a basketball school in quite a long time. You're talking about th that Michigan team that got blown out. Um, I'm, 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 I don't know. I don't know, man. Just the bad week for the Big Ten with the Gabbit games going on. You knew you had to get some type of momentum early in the season. The ACC Big Ten Challenge is coming soon. I can't remember when. I think it's like either the week after this or something like that. I'll have to check. You know, there's, a, there's a whole lot of games to be going on. You know, you you all know there's a whole lot of games to be going on. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just weird to see. You know, it, I, I'm honestly thinking the Big Ten is going to cannibalize itself. You know, like it did last year. And that would show up in the tournament again. And, but the, there is a, there is a team I think you know I, I, I haven't talked about this team yet on on this channel, but it's Purdue. Oh my goodness! Did y'all see the uh, finals of the um, Hall of Fame tip off? Unfortunately, I only caught the end of this game um, due to the NFL. Just you know, I, th I thought there were going to be better NFL games today. So you know, it is what it is there. But Purdue, at the very end of that game, like, I'm sitting here, like, Zach Eddy, um, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, my goodness, monstrous dunk, top 10 type dunk of the season so far, top 1 dunk of the season so far, I mean, God, golly, who boy, who boy, and why don't we get back into this point as well, it's, and let's talk about Villanova, let's talk about Villanova, I, I really thought... You know, I really thought Villanova was going to do a little bit better than what, than what I've seen so far, and they they squandered they, they they squandered things in the UCLA game. They really had UCLA on the ropes for a second there, but ultimately, you know, UCLA was just too much for Villanova and OT. And in this game too against Purdue. It just seemed like there, there was too much. It was just too much at the end because Villanova had the lead, and yet they let it fall. They let it slip right under them. Like the defense locked them down, but ultimately I think Purdue's talent won out in the end. You got guys like Matt Painter. You know, I mean, my goodness. I mean, this this 
This Purdue team is legitimate, very legitimate team. I cannot wait to see them in actual action, not conflicted around, you know, the NFL and stuff like that. Again, talent. No, it, no, Villanova's talented. Villanova's for sure talented. But with the way the rest of the Big East performed in the Gavit games, I'm thinking it's going to be a tougher road this time for the Cats. I'm thinking it's going to be a lot tougher for them. A lot tougher for them. And especially with the way uh, uh, my team of the week from last week is those Marquette Golden Eagles. Sure, they just lost to a team we'll be talking about in a minute. But my goodness, what a week for Marquette. Like, the, I, I don't think anybody expected this turnaround this early for Shaka Smart. Because, I mean, that, that, uh, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how he messed up at Texas. I really don't know how. <laughs> It, it, it really should have been, you know, something that was gift-wrapped. You know, Texas basketball fans have a, have also pretty high standards, you know. They have pretty high standards, you know. So, the way, you know, Shaka didn't get Texas to the level that they should have been. Because remember, there was one year where Texas was 16 and 16 and didn't get in. Barely. Just barely didn't get in. And... and and then, and then, you know, the way the team ended up last year for the Longhorns. Not even making it past the first round. So I'm thinking, you know, now that Shaka's away from that environment of Texas, because, again, Longhorns, you know, you know how the Longhorn fan base is, just toxic as hell for the most part. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Longhorns fan, I can, I can say that. But here in Marquette, you know, it seems like things, you know, this is a school that's actually focused on basketball, actually really, really focused on it, trying to get back to some type of relevance, and I think Marquette, you know, could do some damage in the Big East this year. There's going to be a lot of teams in the Big East this year that are going to do some damage. We'll be talking about a lot of them throughout the season, I guarantee you that. Speaking of that team that just beat Marquette, how about St. Bonaventure? They, uh... They have cruised through the, um, what's it called, the Charleston Classic or whatever. Y'all you, you, know I don't keep up with a lot of these tournaments. I, I really don't. But, man, what a week. What a week for the Bonnies. What a week for the Bonnies and Jaron English. Jaron English is one of those guys that's looking like a real standout. You know, could they run the table in the 810? Because the 810 had a bad week. They lost a lot of buy, buy games, the Atlantic 10 Conference did. Lost a lot of buy games. The bodies are undefeated. That that that's a definitely a, a saving grace there. But again, is it gonna look is it gonna look like um, a Dayton team from a couple years ago where they just ran through with Obi Toppin? You know, it, it could be the exact same thing here with with St. Bonaventure. I really think so. How about um, let's get into these games? <laughs> yeah, let's get into these games. I, I know this is a lot to go over but these are just some of my thoughts that I've jotted down real quick and everything like that just to go over um, this week we got a double dose of Gonzaga and also the battle for Atlantis I always I messed that up I meant battle for Atlantis I don't know what I just said but UCLA Gonzaga the rare number one versus number two matchup glad Dick Vitale's coming back you know I know he was battling um some type of cancer early in the season, but he was able to get cleared to go. And this is just going to be one hell of a matchup here. you got Drew Timmy. In my opinion, the villain of college basketball this year. you got Chet Holmgren, one of the best, you know, one of the biggest guys I think I've ever seen, but also one of the quickest. And of course, you, 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 you know, you got Andrew Nimhard as well for the Zags. And, and, and for UCLA, you got Johnny Chuzang. You did the, I mean, Jack West Jr., Tiger Campbell. I mean, this UCLA team who brought everybody back, who beat Villanova, who has, you know, both these teams have just looked the part so far, looked like number one and number two so far. Going to be one hell of a game. Going to be one hell of a game. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for it. And then, you know, a couple days later on Black Friday, Duke, the Dukes, the, 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 those Duke Blue Devils, the Coach K retirement tour, it's continuing. And, and, and 
with you know the whole pa Paolo Banchero thing, I think again, I, I honestly don't know if he's suspended or not because I haven't looked this up at all. But I think he, if he's playing, it's going to be one hell of a matchup. Him and Holborn or, or or Drew Timmy, you know, facing down low or something like that. There's also another guy who I didn't even highlight from a couple weeks ago, and that is Trevor Keels. My goodness, man can ball. Man can ball. Um, for the Blue Devils, I mean, this is this is going to be a tough, tough week for the Zags because they got Central Michigan as well. Big test coming up for these Gonzaga Bulldogs. Can they stay at number one? Can they can they hold off Duke and UCLA and cement themselves? And I know a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, well, it's a cakewalk for Gonzaga to the title." Blah blah blah. Or some people are like. Oh, well, these are just tough games in the non-conference. They're just going to walk through the WCC with no no strings attached. Again, it's not going to be easy. It's never easy in college basketball to go undefeated. It's never it's never easy because it hardly happens. So this is the, one of the biggest weeks for Gonzaga, I think, in quite a long time. going to be one hell of a week to watch this Zags team and see what they're really, really capable of. Because, I mean, they, they, they really beat up on Texas. They really beat up on Texas. They've really beaten up on some of these other teams they played so far, like Bell Marine. You know, but this week will be even huger. Even huge, even huger deals. Even huger deals, excuse me, for Gonzaga. We'll see what they can do. And the other thing that's happening this week is the battle for Atlantis. Now, we got a couple. We got a couple of good ones here. You know, there, there's going to be like a losers bracket and a winners bracket. But I'm really concerned about these two games that start the battle for Atlantis. I'm probably not going to watch the whole thing. You know, that that's just other things that are going to take up my time. Sorry, it is what it is. It's too, a little bit too early to be talking about. You know, the whole tournaments and everything like that. But the first of these Battle for Atlantis games is Auburn and UConn. How about that? How about that? This is a backcourt for Auburn led by Zeb Jasper, Katie Johnson, Wendell Green Jr. Going to be an interesting you know, rotation here for the Tigers. Going to be an interesting rotation to see what they can do. Um, you know, they... They, they really haven't done too much so far, you know, it's just been kind of easy for them in, in these couple of games they've had so far. And UConn, on the other hand, they're trying to get the hype up for Jordan Hawkins. They're trying to get the hype up for him. I, I, I genuinely don't know what he what he has done so far. But there's other guys on this team as well that, you know, UConn's been putting up a lot of points against, you know, inferior opponents put up a lot of points to put up like an average of like what 90 points so far against you know you know teams that aren't really you know that great you know but guys like Tyrese Martin and Adama Sonogo you know those guys are gonna have to step it up as well I think this is a big one for both these teams in the battle for Atlantis and the other big one here in the battle for Atlantis is Arizona State and Baylor yeah we haven't talked about the defending national champs yet I don't think at all. Uh, we haven't talked about them yet. There are some really, really intriguing guys on this team. I know Adam Flagler's still there, but there's guys like LJ Cryer, Matthew Mayer, and Kendall Brown. They, these guys intrigue me. And the way Baylor dismantled Stanford, could it be the same thing for Arizona State? Because Arizona State has lost a couple of games so far. They lost one, I believe, to UC Riverside, and the other was to San Diego State. I know the San Diego State loss. Um, but Kamani Lawrence and Mary Jackson, you know, the, these guys are going to have to step this thing up because, I mean, Sun Devils, you know, I had a pretty high expectations for them, too. I think people had a lot of high expectations. Obviously, a lot of people were still picking UCLA to take this thing in the Pac-12, but I mean, a lot of a lot of things were going to be said about Arizona State that I think, you know, should be should be better. It should be better right now. This team should be 4-0 right now, in all honesty. They just don't, they just haven't had it all together yet. But again, we'll see, you know, I wonder how the rest of the battle for Atlantis bracket shapes up too. 
Um, again, there's a couple of other teams in the field that, that, that are in the field too, but I mean, again, it, uh, the, these two games really stood out to me more than just the whole bracket. So we'll see how this goes. I know there's a couple other tournaments and stuff this week like that. A lot of these games that are highlighted, I think all of them are neutral site. So it is what it is there. And we'll continue to go down the rabbit hole for this week because, again, a lot of buy games, you know, there's been a lot of buy games that got lost by these home teams that paid a lot of money for, you know, some of these opponents that aren't really up there with the talent you know just taking L so far so we'll see what the craziness of week three provides and I'll come back to you late Sunday night once again for week number four I don't know what I'm gonna have in store for week four um, we're getting into that period of December so things you know, are looking up a little bit. Yeah, we're getting into that weekend of December, that first weekend of December. There's going to be a couple games I know that I'll be looking at first weekend of December. But for everything else, um, just wait and see. Because, uh, again, I don't know how the week is going to shape up. But for that, uh, I'll leave y'all with this. And, again, I hope y'all have a great week. Let's have a good week with this. we got a long week of college basketball to go. I, I I just can't wait for what you know what what these two Zags games are going to have in store because these are massive. I think these mean a lot more, you know, than the battle for Atlantis. But I mean, massive massive games all around this week. So again, converse with me in the comment section. Get get to know me as a Texas fan. I haven't really watched Texas aside from the Gonzaga game. So you know, it is what it is. Um, tell me your team, you know, again, like I said a couple weeks ago, tell me your team, tell me what your team is doing, you know, so I can get some more info on them, and I'm trying to, you know, get into the groove of things to see more games and stuff like that and everything like that, because again, it's a long process, there's a lot of, there's a lot of teams in college basketball, so you gotta get, you gotta get, you gotta get in the know-how, the knowledge, you know, like, quick, so, that'll do it for tonight, and See you all throughout the week with the rest of my coverage of college football, NFL, you know, previews, reactions, and another preview, and then another reaction, yada, yada, yada. You all know that already. Remember to like, share your comments, subscribe, click the notification bell, and just, you know, be positive on this app, you know. Be positive. Good night, everybody.